Hello and welcome to Dusty VCR, the podcast where we rewatch old movies from our childhood and decide whether they still hold up. I'm your host, Michael Lynch, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host and sister, Rachel Lynch. Rachel, how are you? Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Rachel's not uh. feeling well today. Not doing so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm experiencing some depression today. Mm. It's a lot of fun to kind of think about as I've been experiencing more anxiety and depression recently. Mm. I think, huh, wait a second. Is this new or have I felt this way my entire life and I just didn't realize it oh. until today? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at. Yeah. Have you ever had that thought? <laughs> yeah, I kind of think like, oh, is like how I'm feeling now different than how I felt a year ago? Like it's hard for me to remember. Like a big change I had was like quitting my job and then Ooh. moving from New York to Massachusetts. And I'm like, how do I feel day to day compared to how I felt in New York? And yeah. It's, it's hard to remember. Yeah. You know what? As we're talking about it, I also feel like um, this is a thought I have when I'm on mushrooms, magical mm. mushrooms. Yeah. Um, that I think, do I always feel like this? Uh -huh. or, <laughs> or is this uh, is this different? Yeah. Well, I do magical mushrooms every day since I moved to Massachusetts. So I think that's part of why I have that feeling. Right. Yeah. You're doing the uh, macro dosing? Macro dosing. <laughs> Yeah. Is that a real thing? It's the opposite of micro I know, but is macro dosing a real thing? Yeah, that's a, a real thing. thing that I made up. <laughs> no, it's a real thing. No, it isn't. Who is this we're hearing? Is it real? <laughs> yeah. This is our uh, other co-host and friend, Zena Dreyfus. Zena, how are you? Hello, and hello. What do you think about macro dosing? Um, I was listening to a talk by Paul Stamets recently, and I think he was using the term macro dosing as what like, is macro, like if you take like, you know, three, four, five grams of shrooms, that's a... <laughs> That's a that's a big dose. That's, that's a, a macro dose. That's a hefty chunk there. <laughs> that's just scientist talk for tripping balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, very frequently I'm walking around in the winter pretty depressed and I look around and I'm like, everyone must feel like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real. New England. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has been a very gray past couple weeks. Mm, yeah. And you know inside and out. Oh, Zena, so, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. I just, you what know, it, fear. Zena, what is it that you're trying to say? I hear it's going to be a, a rough winter, folks. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. Ha rough how? Well, you know, that's what they're saying. Who told you that? Them. Oh, wow. Yeah, them, they're saying it, you know. I better get ready. Can you guys explain for our, our listeners what's playing out right now? Well, <sighs> listeners Does that out ruin there. It? Listeners out there, no, it doesn't ruin it, I don't yeah. think. I think they're gonna I think they're just gonna say, Ha yeah. This uh -huh. is one of these things that the listeners out there yeah. they've been experiencing their whole lives. Yeah. And they didn't even know it. Right. And I think that thing is called small talk. Right. It's basically small talk, but also another phrase that we've we've been using is Macro talk. <laughs> mac macro talk. <laughs> and stock conversations. <laughs> right. So a stock conversation is one that you can have like and pretty much know exactly the way it's going to go no matter who you have this right. conversation with. So you say to somebody, you say, you know, I hear it's going to be a rough winter. Right. And then that person says, oh, my gosh, really? And then they talk about either, the, you know, everybody's got feelings about the winter. Yeah. Mostly people like to shit on the winter. So right. most of the time people will say like, ugh. <laughs> don't tell me that. Yeah. And then you have throw up on your shoes and it's gross. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've all been there, folks. <laughs> This is one that we've just been trying with a lot of people. Yeah, and I, I witnessed you attempting that last week when we, we all went for a hike. We were all three hiking. We were on a dusty VCR hike. It was uh -huh. a retreat, a work retreat. A work trip. <laughs> and while we were on this team building exercise, we came upon this family, I yeah. guess. It was, what do you call that? Like a family? I call a it a family. Herd, a a herd, herd of humans. <laughs> a herd Something like that. And and we said to them, oh, hi, 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 hi. And they said, hey, oh, and they were like, oh, it's cold out here. And I said, yeah, I hear it's going to be a rough winter. <laughs> and they looked a little puzzled. 
and they, they said they then they said to me rough how <laughs> and i didn't really have an answer to that because i have no idea yeah but you know what actually somebody sent me an article that it really is going to be a rough winter oh, okay. for frigid frigid temperatures oh jesus oh, look what we did <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they looked pretty puzzled. We had that little funny exchange and then we walk away and Zena, we were hiking with Zena's brother, Ziv, and Zena said, Rachel, Ziv just rough wintered them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you got to be careful out yeah. there, you know, when yeah. you rough winter careful. people. Yeah, we've been rough wintering the shit out of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Paul, my boss, Polly B. Yeah. Um, he had a great reaction. Oh yeah. He, you know, we talk about the weather a lot yeah. for house painting. Right. And he said, you know, he was talking about the weather one day, and I said, yeah, here yeah, it's going to be a rough winter. And he said, oh really? I heard it's going to be mild. <laughs> <laughs> that just gave me like a little glimmer of hope. What do you think it means? Like, do you think you can read anything into people's reactions? Do you think it says something about the person how they react Ooh, to rough winter? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I do. Yeah. For example. The weirdest exchange that I've had rough wintering, I was at Cumberland Farms mm -hmm. and I was buying ice cream and other things and I had all my winter gear on. Yeah. And the guy said to me, looks like you're dressed for summer, which uh -huh. like that just it sounds exactly like I hear it's going to be a rough winter. Mm -hmm. Like, so he just threw that right in my lap. Right. It just... I, how could I not say it? Right. So I said, oh, yeah, but you know what? I hear it's going to be a rough winter. Yeah. And he said, oh, really? And I said, yeah, I'm just bracing myself. And then he said to me, a rough winter, huh? Bracing yourself, huh? And he looked at the ice cream and looked at me like a little like... A skeptical. Caught you. Uh. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Wait, Cut was he implying out. that you were, <laughs> you were eating ice cream to like fatten up for winter? <laughs> Is that your interpretation? No. <laughs> He was trying to imply that I like didn't really oh, wasn't that really ice cream bracing isn't really, myself. You weren't taking this rough winter seriously. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was upset with how how I was reacting to the winter roughness right. and that he felt like I wasn't really bracing myself. Right. So how do you interpret Paul's response? Like, what does it say about Paul I that mean, he says it's going to be It really makes sense for Paul. He's oh such God. a happy, optimistic guy yeah. Oh, like, yeah. all the time. Yeah. 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 So so that's the big thing, you know, about doing this rough winter experiment is like, I tend to shy away from small talk because yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that because that's like disingenuous, you right. know? Right. But wait, now did we just hit... The, the word of the day. The word of the day. <laughs> disingenuous. Okay. Yeah. So if I saw it written, I might think disingenuous, <laughs> which implies something different. Well, you know what's funny about this, Zena? Is that I think you have a different word for this word, but it's a Zena version. <laughs> Dis disingenuous? Yeah. But I think you say ingenuine. Ingenuine. Mm. Baby. <laughs> And I've never, I've never told you <laughs> about this word. Oh, I love when you just let me say my words how I say them. <laughs> I feel like I can be my real self in front of you guys. <laughs> mm, okay, so disingenuous. Yeah. Disingenuous, yeah. So I often feel disingenuous when I engage in small talk. Yeah. So ungenuine. <laughs> I realize with this rough winter, like, it's just about making a little connection. Right. Sometimes you can't all, you just have small talk because you can't have big talk. Right. So, like, when you're doing, like, a quick transaction or, um, you know, passing by some hikers on a yeah. hiking path, some stuff like that, it's got to be small. It's got to be small. And yeah. why not make a little connection here yeah. and there, Make people. the best of your small talk. Make the best of your small talk. Yeah. Make it rough winner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So before we get into the movie, we have a word from our sponsors. Rachel, do you want to relay those words? Oh, this is this is one of my dear favorite sponsors. Yeah, original sponsor. Original of... sponsor. We've kind of spoken about this sponsor before. That's yeah. Luthiers Co-op. Expert repairs and free live music with lots of strings attached. Oh, yeah. How cute is that tagline? Adorable. That's so cute. Where are, where are they? 
They are at 108 Cottage Street in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. And they're also, you can look at their Facebook, their Instagram. They post videos, yeah. cute photos. Mm -hmm. And from what I hear, there's going to be some food opening up there Ooh. in the next few years. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Oh. maximum yeah <laughs> avoid eating until then and just wait and also a good friend of the show matt woodland hosts his comedy show there the first tuesday of every month that's right luthiers so today we are discussing the 2001 movie saving silverman starring jason biggs amanda peet and jack black rachel what were your impressions going into the movie what did you remember when i was thinking of it at first i was like yes i'm so excited to right. watch saving silverman fucking love that movie right and as i was like thinking about it more and more i was like this could end up being not that good right and just like kind of thinking over like what happens in it yeah. and i couldn't remember that much that i really loved about it yeah um but i remembered jack black impersonating a mime having sex yeah and going Oh, I'm a mom. I'm a mom. <laughs> and then also Jack Black saying, if the nachos stick together, it's one nacho. Yeah. Which is a phrase I use, continue to use <laughs> right. in life since uh -huh. that movie came out. Yeah. And Zena, had you ever seen this movie? Nope. Did you guys watch the trailer? A fake trailer. It was, uh, yeah. You know, Amazon Prime sometimes tricks us. I went through the same experience. It just is a random scene it's from the movie. It's a random scene. Yeah. So, and I, I was like, That'll just be the trailer for right. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a similar memory too. I definitely remembered the I'm a mime scene. And the other thing I remembered was thinking at the time that it was progressive because I remember Jack Black being gay and everybody being pretty okay with that. And then Allegra was talking to me before we watched it and she's like, what do you think it's going to be? And I was like, I think it's going to be okay and it's going to have its moments. And then I think I had the same processes you where i was like yeah. is this good yeah yeah so what do we think how did it hold up not good <laughs> <Yeah>. not good <laughs> really you know i have to say i can't completely disconnect my demeanor today from <laughs> the movie that i saw last yeah, night <laughs> let's blame it on this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was not pleased. <laughs> right. How how quickly did you figure out that it was going to be bad? Right away. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty soon that I realized like, oh, no. I mean, it yeah. was just like I said, like as it got closer to watching the movie, I was realizing what it might be. Right. And just the more that I was thinking about the movie, the more I was feeling like, uh-oh. Yeah. And that feeling just continued as right. the movie played. Uh-huh. Zena, what did you think? Yeah, definitely a lot. It was like a little, it was so weird because it was pretty jarring yeah. at parts, but also like so silly and dumb that, yeah. yeah, it was it was strange. Yeah. Yeah, I, within like the first five minutes, I was like, oh, this is going to be a rough ride. <laughs> like, I think they say the line, carpe poon. And I was like, uh, oh, yeah. boy. Oh, no. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. Like, there were so many jokes that just fell really flat and then, like, just didn't age well for, like, socially. It's just, like, really yeah. inappropriate jokes. Every person of color that's in the movie is, like, a, caricature. Like a really big caricature of right. that. Yeah, that culture. Right. Yeah. This is the worst I think we've done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like considering how it's just funny, like how excited I was when yeah. we chose the movie right. and how terrible I feel about it now. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> like if a week ago somebody said to me, Saving Silverman, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I love that movie. Love great that. movie. Yeah. Yeah. So many great Jack Black moments. <laughs> So let's uh, let's go scene by scene. So we start out and it's three friends that have been friends since childhood and now they're in their 20s and they're all kind of losers. And Jason Biggs is talking to his friend Steve Zahn and Jack Black about how he's never going to find a woman. He only is in love with this woman. He this girl from his high school Sandy that moved Perkis. away. Sandy Perkis, who was from Drop Dead Gorgeous. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
I knew she was, but I actually still can't place what she was in Drafted Gorgeous. I like her a lot. She was probably the best part of the yeah, movie. Yeah, she was really well cast. Yeah. Yeah. There was like, yeah, a couple silver linings in that movie. And yeah. Sandy was one of them. Yeah. Sure. Is, is silver linings a pun on the silver Silverman? Mans. <laughs> <laughs> These silver linings really <laughs> saved the movie. <laughs> So he's complaining that he's never going to find true love. And then Amanda Pete walks into the bar and they're like, oh, my God, Amanda Pete, you have to go talk to her. Did you guys find it kind of strange that they were so excited about Amanda Pete? Yeah, they just, I forget like how they described her, but it was something like, yeah, like something like, uh, yeah, like they almost said like juicy or like, you know, and she's like, (laughs) she's a a beautiful person. Right. Tall and thin and like. Right. You know, not necessarily like the voluptuous, like bombshell of a woman that right. they're kind of making her sound right. like. Right, that's mm. that's how I felt too. I was like, I think Amanda Pete's very attractive, but she's not like she walks into a bar and everyone's like, "Oh my god, Amanda Pete." Yeah, she's like, a, like a very beautiful woman for real life. For movie life, she's yeah, not not a bombshell. Yeah, and so Jason Biggs goes over and tries to hit on her, and she is very cold to him and then she basically like pimps him into pretending he's her boyfriend so that another more annoying guy won't hit on her and then she just starts bossing him around and then we cut to six weeks later he's like super in love with her and he got her a six-week anniversary present that she doesn't seem to care about and then we're this is our first introduction to forever in this movie you're always seeing amanda pete's boobs yep yeah, well, any... everyone's boobs. And uh, yeah. as I'm taking notes, you know, so I should also say I invited Alex and Chris to come watch this movie with us. Yeah, Chris Lund, former guest of the podcast. Former guest of the podcast. So that was particularly, you know, like you invite a group of people to come watch a movie at your yeah. house. And, and they're all so horny the entire time. <laughs> Uh, but just like, you know, just what a disappointing movie <laughs> right. for a group of people. <laughs> right. So I was writing notes in my book and I wrote Mm -hmm. so much boob and cleave action. Yeah. And Alex took my pen and he wrote, breasts do most of the heavy lifting in this film, (laughs) which is true. (laughs) Yeah. And so you see their interaction and six weeks in, they apparently have never talked about sex. And he's like saying he wants to have sex with her and she's saying she's going to wait until marriage but that they can pleasure each other in other ways and you think she's going to go down on him, but really she's making him go down on her. And then it cuts to it's over and then she's like, oh no, I won't do it for you because I have sensitive gums, which I thought was actually kind of a funny line. He's like, oh (laughs) yeah, it's a health condition. Sure, of course. (laughs) But then he introduces her to his friends, which I thought was so ridiculous. Like he invites her over to watch football with with his two friends Mm -hmm. who are like, basically act like high schoolers they're just like making nachos and they live in this crappy house and she comes over with her like craziest shirt of the movie it's just like way open down the middle is that the craziest shirt of the movie i don't know because there's just so many different outfits that she has that are just like showing like three quarters of her breasts well in this one you can actually see her nipples at one point like, uh-huh. it's just, like, way open. Yeah. So that was the craziest one to me. And the thing I thought was funny is I wanted to rewatch the trailer after I watched the movie because I remember in the trailer, I had the DVD of this movie. I've watched the director's commentary for this movie <laughs> when I was, like, 18. <laughs> but I remember, like, going through all the special features and in the theatrical trailer, Steve Zahn is trying to perform oral sex on himself and he's like laying naked oh, in this pose. Yeah. And in the trailer they weirdly CGI'd pants yes. on him. And then so I was <laughs> I was looking for that and then I realized that earlier in the trailer they CGI'd together the her open shirt. So they show the scene where she comes with this like wide open shirt and they CGI it shut so it looks like one solid shirt. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. I did not realize he was trying to perform, give himself a blowjob. Oh, that's yeah. So, I mean, it I makes sense. Yeah, cause... I didn't realize that in past viewings, but I did this time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he invites <laughs> Judith, Amanda Pete, over to meet his friends, and it's like a huge disaster, and they spill salsa all over her, and she's like, you can't ever hang out with them again. You're out of the band. Oh, we should mention they're in, they're friends, and they also are in a Neil Diamond cover band. I do like that. I thought I would. I I think it just really grounded me. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and so she's furious and he's like, I'm not going to stop hanging out with my friends. And she's like, fine, then no sex for a month. And he's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you can't go down on me for a month. And if you keep this up, I'm going to take away your masturbation privileges. <laughs> And so he agrees and they replace him with an Indian guy who is like way over the top Indian stereotype and can't speak English. Well, he speaks English. He just speaks it in this very like stereotypical right. Indian accent. Right. And sort of broken English. Manner. Yeah. yeah. They have this like one last meeting where they try to convince Jason Biggs and they show him this chart about like the, the <laughs> level of fun they're having, which I also like remembered finding funny and this time I didn't. I felt the same way about the I'm a mime joke. I thought yeah. I was going to think it was so funny. Yeah, I was I, like, this isn't as funny I as I remember. I was like, oh, I don't remember how this goes, but I know it's good. Yeah. And it was, it sucked. Yeah, it was kind of flat. <laughs> yeah. There were other lines that I forgot about that I found really funny. Yeah. But the I'm a mime was, yeah. I found the, the nachos joke funnier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, the, there, and then in this scene, there was one joke I liked where... He's saying like, oh, you know, Judas got me going to counseling. It's yeah. <laughs> two hours per session, three times a week. And he's like, who's your counselor? He's like, Judith. <laughs> so I like that. I did like that. Yeah. Wait, but did you say, did you say just counseling or relationship counseling? I thought it was counseling. I he thought it was said like personal. He said relationship oh, counseling. Oh, that's even funnier. That's so much. It's so, yeah, it's way funnier yeah. because at first, even just that alone is funny. Right. That he's going to relationship counseling By on himself. his own. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's Judith, who's his counselor. Right. And then, by luck, the the old high school crush shows up again. Um, so Jason Biggs announced that they're getting married. And this is where, like, there's a lot of sexism to this movie, too, where mm-hmm. it's, it's supposed to be funny that it's so ridiculous that he would He's take her last name. her last name, like, <laughs> like, like abuse. Are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, on top of all the things she does that are, like, abusive, it's just like... She thinks it's sexist for her, for women to take last names, so I'm taking her last name. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty fine. Yeah, it's like kind of a fair point on her. It doesn't really fit in with the rest of the things she's doing to him. Right. And then we see Sandy Perkis, his high school crush, randomly has moved back to town. They're like, oh, that's a sign. You have to dump Amanda Pete and get back with Sandy Perkis. And he's like, no, no, we're engaged, so we're, we're just going to keep going with the marriage. And so they realize that they have no other option and they decide to kidnap Amanda Pete. What did you guys think of the kidnapping scene? I mean, this is where it kind of gets uncomfortable. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. uncomfortable before that. <laughs> well, this is like this really is pre- dark, this is but it's being played dark, for, yeah. yeah. They're like breaking into a woman's house right. and <laughs> physically assaulting her. Yeah, so they, they kidnap her. Steve Zahn tries to shoot her with a tranquilizer, but accidentally shoots himself. She ends up chasing Jack Black. She's like attacking him. And then she's trying to kind of drown him in her toilet. And then Steve Zahn comes and electrocutes her. And Which really seems to only affect Jack Black. Well, no, it does. No, I she, guess it's it, both kill, of them. it like knocks her out. Yeah. But not Jack Black. And it's that's like another really dumb thing. It's like he electrocutes her butt and you just see her like butt wiggling around. Yeah. As it's being it's just a close up of her butt. Yeah, they're. The, I mean, they electrocute people a few times with that thing yeah. from the just from lots the of electrocution, animal control yeah. stuff. Yeah, Steve Zahn is a pest control guy. So they they kidnap her and they chain her up in the basement and make her wear lingerie. Which this like could be the plot of like a really serious drama. Like it's it's sort of the plot of Room, where like he takes they, her as a sex slave. Well, he's she's wearing. What do you mean they make her wear lingerie? Well, she's they, wearing she the was already wearing first. lingerie. Well, yeah. It's she's like wearing lingerie-ish nightgown. Yeah, she's wearing a sexy nightgown. Yeah. And then they give her clothes. They give her clothes, which it makes no sense that she can change into because she's chained to right. the ankle. So Steve Zahn calls up Sandy and like gets her to meet him. And they meet in front of a porn store. And it never becomes yeah, relevant. Yeah, it never comes up. Yeah. And she's like, by the way, I'm studying to be a nun. And he's like, oh, whatever. You should still go out with Jason Biggs. And she's like, okay, I guess. Which I thought was like also kind of funny playing into the sexism because it's like Judith is bad because she's not like agreeable and compliant. Whereas the other one, like Sandy, agrees with everything we say. So Uh she must be a good person. Right. And yeah, that's so like they're trying to convince him to go out. And he's like, no, as long as Judith is alive. Oh, by the way, like. He's still like, living in her house and doesn't notice the fact that her door has been kicked in and like her, t- they like completely ruin her bathroom in fighting. And he's like, right. I guess she just moved away. 
because they left a typewritten note that said like i'm leaving you yeah and he never questions that and he thinks she's dead right <laughs> that part is really dark they dig up a dead body oh yeah body. they dig up a dead body and talk oh about my God. like the dead body's boobs <laughs> yeah jesus and so then that convinces him that, that amanda pete is dead and he agrees to go on the date with sandy and they meet at the restaurant and as far as he knows, his like his fiance died like two days ago. Right. The pacing in this movie is yeah. This all takes bonkers. place over like a week. <laughs> it makes no sense, and it like felt to me like they were kind of trying to make that the joke. Yeah. But it wasn't like enough. It wasn't an. Right. It wasn't. They didn't lay it on thick enough or something. Right. It was like you gotta kind of do it or don't do it. You right. know. Right. And so, Zena, do you want to talk about the her showing that he she can lift him? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're at lunch, and uh, she picks him up at some point, <laughs> yeah. and he he's, falls off a pier. He's yeah. like, he's like saying, like, oh, you can't, you you know, you couldn't lift me anymore, right? Like, you you could never. Of and course, they're like, oh, we have to prove it school. right next to this this dock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like laid out in such a way like they're standing right in front of the water. Right. And so clearly like she's just gonna throw set him in the water. <laughs> she's gonna go yeah, he's gonna go in the water. And then he can't swim. It's a, a big nod to splash. <laughs> and she dives in and saves him. And then like they, they swim to shore seemingly like miles away. They're nowhere near where <laughs> where the dock was. And then they're about to kiss and he throws up and they go to the laundromat together. And what did you guys think of that laundromat oh my scene? God. <laughs> oh, oh. So she's like, yeah, wearing a leather jacket yeah. and her nun suit is in the dryer. Right. Nun suit. <laughs> <laughs> and so once it's done, uh, you know, he pulls it out and she's going to put it back on. Of yeah. course, she's not wearing a bra. Right. And she's like, oh, just look away. Look away right. so you don't see me. But she's still standing in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of, of a laundromat. The laundromat. <laughs> and, and then he just turns around anyway. He turns around anyway. He's, he's like peeking glances like, no, he through gives the her reflection her underwear. of a glass. Oh, right. He's like. Yeah. And then he watches in the reflection to watch her put on the underwear uh -huh, yeah and it's like another gratuitous shot of like just her bare ass putting right, on underwear right and then another shot of her like her like side boob as she puts on her nun suit yeah i was thinking about you know when we did drop dead gorgeous and panino was talking about how like she felt like drop dead gorgeous as she was watching it she was like this probably was written by a woman uh -huh. i feel like this was written by a woman yeah. and like this movie as i was watching it i was just like there's just no question <laughs> here right. about whether it was a man or a woman who wrote right. this movie. Right. <laughs> and then what? It, so the the next scene is Amanda Pete giving therapy to Jack Black. What did you guys think of that? I do like that scene. Yeah, that worked pretty well. I feel like that was one of the best scenes in the movie. Uh huh. She's like, "Have you ever had a sexual fantasy about a man?" And he's like, "What? Like a tall man?" <laughs> She's like. No, any, any, he's like, tall people bother me. <laughs> just like, it could be any, man. He's like, does that include celebrities? <laughs> and then finally, like, we, we cut back and he has realized that he's gay and it's, it's been this secret he's had his whole life and he never realizes it. And as he's crying, Amanda Pete whacks him over the head with a, a lamp and then escapes. Yeah. So this is when she's escaped finally. Yeah. She's escaped. She's yeah. on the run. Yeah. And so she, she eventually like drives to the police station and is just about to run to the police station and Steve Zahn shoots her with a tranquilizer dart and then puts a blanket over her. And this line, I was like actually legitimately laughing hysterically for like 20 seconds. <laughs> Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so like you think he's about to get caught and he like throws the blanket and two cops come out and <laughs> he's like, you're safe, officers. I just bagged me one of them killer goats that escaped from the zoo. And then it cuts them and they're like, good job. <laughs> and then they just walk away. I was so disappointed that she didn't get away. Yeah. I, yeah. That was rough. I right. was just like, yeah, oh, she man. Was so close. Even though they're two stupid idiots. It's right. just like, it just like, yeah, it just brought me like, like to to those feelings of like what if this was real and right. someone escaped and then got caught right. again and yeah. oh yeah. man right in front of the police right station in right the police oh my gosh yeah. yeah and then what did you guys think about the nun gym i really liked oh that, that was great yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, I think the nun gym was one of my favorite parts of the movie. I remember dad loving that. Oh, yeah. They're like so effortlessly pumping iron, like Like, huge barbells. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. And I love that they're just like spotting each other and like like, having casual gym chat. Yeah, just like having having gym chat, talking about life and questions about how to proceed and yeah like how to fight with your desire and right what you do right and she's just getting this like sage advice from a e- nun who's, yeah. who's pumping doing shoulder presses <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed that and then i think i think i'll call this the worst scene of the movie is yep. when they're at the nightclub we go oh. <laughs> right from the best to the worst when they go to the oh. nightclub together jason biggs and uh, sandy are on a date together Um, And he keeps talking about Judith and she's like, you're obviously not over her. And like his fiance died like three (laughs) days ago. She like got to cut him a little bit of slack. I know. She's so mad. (laughs) (laughs) And so he's like, excuse me. And he goes to the bathroom and calls Steve Zahn and he's like, I keep talking about Judith. You have to help me. And so Steve Zahn immediately drives over and attaches electrodes to his nipples so that he can electrocute him every time he says Judith as aversion therapy. I mean, this is this is how relationships work, you know. Right. Second day, you go out for dinner, you forget all about your previous relationships, right. you decide to get married and have right. kids. <laughs> yeah, you get over any grief, get over it. Yeah. Get over it's it. been three days. It's been three days. Come on. Grow up. And so he, he like starts dancing with her. Meanwhile, Steve Zahn gets pulled out by the bouncer who happens to keep punching Steve Zahn on the button of the the electrodes. And so every time he punches Steve Zahn, it electrocutes Jason Biggs. And it's just the worst joke. Like, he's on the dance floor and he's getting shocked and she thinks that that's his dance move. And she's like, wow, you've got good moves. And everybody else is, like, impressed with his dancing because he's just, like, jerking around. I kind of liked that. I felt like it (laughs) should have been good, but I was just too annoyed. So many things annoyed me. I think I was too... I I was really annoyed because I knew what was going to happen. Right. And then he catches on fire and then goes to the bar to put himself out and... Wouldn't you know it, the bar is lined with gasoline. Yeah. And a spark flies and lights the entire bar on fire. And then they run out. Fastest fire department response I've ever seen in a movie. They run out. The the fire truck is already there. It's like they were ready for this fire. Right. They're just hanging out. And he's like, oh, I had to do this to like as a version therapy. And she's like, you're obviously not over your ex. I have to leave. I just realized something. Yeah. So the whole movie, I was thinking that this guy's kind of like Ross from Friends. <laughs> and at this dinner, he calls Sandy Judith. Oh, yeah. The way Ross, doesn't Ross call? Um, yeah. I wasn't Emily. a big Friends person. Yeah. He calls Emily. Rachel. Rachel yeah. at yeah. their wedding. The- that same episode, they do aversion therapy because Rachel's <laughs> trying to get over Ross and Phoebe shows a picture of Ross and keeps slapping her. <laughs> so they yeah, totally that's just, stole that's this. That's way better. They should have just had that scene from right. Friends <laughs> just cut that replace <laughs> this scene in right. Saving Silverman. And so then like she drives home and then he runs 30 miles to her house. That oh, was, I love like, that. Why 30 miles? You could have just said three. I love it. <laughs> he like shows up sweating. I'm surprised you don't like that. I love that. Oh, that, I did not that. Like was that was one of the best jokes of the movie. They're supposed to live in Seattle. Like you're not it's running so... 30 miles anywhere in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so great. And then he's like, I he's have to all... tell you, I love you. And she's like, I love you. <laughs> and then like she basically decides to quit the nunnery uh... because he's in love with her yeah i feel like they were trying to do too many things so much stuff happens in this movie so much stuff happens but it's like the style of comedy is all over the place too like because that kind of thing of like that he ran 30 miles yeah that's a doable joke that's but sort I, of like I a do under- Wet Hot American that's Summer That's exactly joke. what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Is like, I feel like it's almost trying to be a little like Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah. Like really over the top, goofy, ridiculous, right. so, so, so super silly. Yeah. But they didn't fully commit to that. Right. Same with the timing. Similar to yeah. Wet Hot American Summer. Wet right. Hot American Summer <laughs> yeah, takes, place, takes place in a day. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it feels like they were kind right. of trying to do that, but also, like, sort of make it more like a romantic comedy kind of thing right. at the same time. And it's like they needed to kind of choose one. Right. And then how did you guys feel about 
Amanda Pete. So she's been recaptured and they're like trying to be tougher with her and Steve Zahn decides he's the only one who can deal with her. Yeah, this is what I thought was going to be the worst part. Maybe a scene well, coming up he, is the worst yeah, like scene in the movie. When she t- seduces him, what did you think of that? With the Arby's or with the yeah, burger? Oh, yeah. I thought that was the worst scene of the movie. Oh, really? I kind of like that. I thought it was so gross. Oh, I, I enjoyed that. Oh, okay. She's like trying to escape by like seducing him and she's like seductively eating the hamburger he's feeding her <laughs> and it's like disgusting and secret sauce is falling on her boobs yeah. it was gross because yeah it just feels like felt so like fantasized or something to it me. felt gross because it basically felt like he's raping his captive yeah yep but uh-huh. i did still find it funny that like she's trying to make eating the hamburger look sexy uh-huh, uh-huh. what did you think rachel I was very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to side with Xena on this one. <laughs> I found it really uncomfortable and yeah, just not not great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was not a fan. And, and like speaking of just like too many things happening in the movie, they're interrupted because the coach <laughs> right. shows up at their door. The coach who was in prison for murdering somebody accidentally at a football game. <laughs> that was good. I, I like that. that. He, I like gets, that. he gets mad and throws uh, like a, a yard marker and it accidentally goes through a ref's it heart. It impales the ref. And, yeah, he arrives at the house and says that he got off for... it. Was... He got an appeal because the judge was a sports fan. Oh, because so the, the judge... judge let him... Oh, okay. Yeah, out of jail. Oh, okay. I thought they said something like, oh, yeah, it was judged or like it was ruled that I was a like a sports fan. Like that was the ruling is like, that's just sports. (laughs) That's just how sports go. So, yeah, the coach goes down and tries to fight her and she beats him up and she beats up Steve Zahn. And then there was another joke I really like where Jack Black just hides by putting a hoodie over his face. I love that. And she runs by him and then she like notices that he's there and then like looks back and he just like takes off the hoodie and then runs away screaming. (laughs) I did like like all her uh, even though I'm you know it's kind of like tacky I'm sure like all her karate and like her kick ass moves and like how none of the men in the movie know how to fight right and so that's her final escape and she comes back and confronts Jason Biggs who's like in the middle of hooking up with Sandy Perkis and she's like no no now we have to get back together because like I'm your fiance you committed to me and Sandy Perkis go away She's just right back to the wedding. No, yeah. like, she's not going to go to the police about any of well, this. Well, she does. They they go to jail. Steve Zahn and Jack Black go to go to jail. That's oh, right. Yeah. right. Of course. Yeah. So of course. briefly, because yeah. there's yeah. so much that happens in this movie. <laughs> right. I forgot. <laughs> and, and this is the other gay joke that's, like, pretty weird, where he's like, oh, they're sodomizing us. He's like, oh, they're cornholing you. Then I'll break you out. And so he can't post bail, but he breaks them out using Steve Zahn's truck. That's enough for him to con- convince the coach to break them out that like he can't imagine the, the right. indignity of being sodomized. Right. And then Jack Black is like, you got sodomized? I want to meet him. Yeah. But sort of like equating getting raped totally. with like no, a normal gay really relationship. <laughs> so that's no good. And then the coach breaks them out by like backing the van through the wall of a prison, which you apparently can just do. Well, those... I, I liked seeing that because the cinder blocks were so light and they right. just like floated through the <laughs> right. air like <laughs> and went into the bed. Went into right? the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so and then like this is like the cra- <laughs> this is like a high bar. But I think this is the craziest thing in the movie where they go and get Neil Diamond. Yeah. It's funny that Neil Diamond was in this movie. Right. Bad move. Right. <laughs> really? I like that. I liked no, but it. Like, Bad move on his, on his part. part yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I like couldn't understand. Like, I had to go back and rewatch because I didn't understand what happened. Because I'm like, they pick up uh, Sandy and then you see them like go someplace else. And then I'm like, wait, why is Neil Diamond in this van with them? Did I miss something? And I was like, I just saw them like carry somebody in under a sheet. Why did that happen? Uh-huh. And I go back right. and they showed up to like a concert hall and the back door was open and they like back up the van (laughs) run in and then come out two seconds later carrying like a limp body and then they pull off the blanket and it's neil diamond he's not that surprised like it it seems like he's like like in he's he's in pretty quickly yeah yeah but it's like it's it's set up like a heist movie where the person is in on it. They're like picking up another person who's in on that plan. Right. But instead it's like Neil Diamond must have been napping or something. And they or just... they shot him with a tranquilizer gun. 
No, because he's awake. <laughs> he's... Well, yeah, but <laughs> that in, in this movie, tranquilizers work. The different. science of this movie, <laughs> right. I don't think it really matters. So they pick up Neil Diamond. Um, the other thing that's weird is she. They pick her up from the the convent, and they're like, "Here, we got these clothes for you to wear." And she's like, oh, "Wait, where'd you get these clothes?" And he's like, "Oh, from JD's sister. She's a stripper and a hooker." And so she's like wearing hooker clothes, and you're like. She could have just kept the habit on. Why did she have right. to switch into... Why is stripper... Uh, and also, like, why why does it have to be... Why did they have to... Right, just, the entire movie why, is just like, oh, it'd be funny if we see more of her boobs. Yeah, it would be really funny if all women are showing off all their body and, <laughs> right. like, being strippers and hookers and like, right. sex objects. Right. And so they, they crash the wedding and the nun comes and is like, no, I'm in love with you. And she convinces him to leave Judith. I think by singing a Neil Diamond song because yeah. Amanda Peet is not a Neil Diamond song. Yeah. And Did you say that Amanda Peet is not a Neil Diamond song? She's not a Neil Diamond song or a fan. Yeah. I just <laughs> wanted to clarify. <laughs> She's no Neil Diamond song. <laughs> and then Amanda Peet is angry and Steve Zahn shows up expecting Amanda Peet to like run into his arms, which is crazy. And I was really worried it was going to happen because I, you I, see her I running. I remembered what was going to happen as she's running. Yeah. You see her running. She picks up a chair and whacks him in the face. I'm like, okay. Whew. Th- I but was worried. Then. Yeah. <laughs> So, so they're beating each other up, yeah. punching each other, hitting each other with chairs. Yeah. And then they start to make out. He's like, admit it. You liked it when you kissed me. You need an assertive man to push you around. And she's like, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> that was, yeah, that was that was pretty uh, rough. But Jack Black comes to the wedding carrying the coach. And he's like, the coach is like, oh, when are you going to get a, a woman? And Jack Black is like, oh, actually, I'm gay. And the coach is like, me too. And, and then, then they get together. They get together. <laughs> which is like, I felt like another like kind of tone deaf thing with. Definitely. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, you're gay. Two I'm gay, gay people. Oh, okay. That's Let's all we have need. Be together. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the final scene is they're all playing a concert together with Neil Diamond. They've all gotten married on stage at a Neil Diamond concert. And they're all just like singing and dancing. Nobody's gone to prison for the many crimes they've committed. <laughs> and nobody like nobody's there's no repercussions for anybody they've like committed these terrible crimes like broken out of prison like put other people at risk Which, kidnapping again it's just i don't know you can you can do that in some movies yeah, but like you this, kind you gotta I think you're commit absolutely right to the about, style yeah i think you're absolutely right like it it feels like the end was trying to be Wet Hot American Summer. Because, like, yeah. this could have happened in Wet Hot American Summer and it'd been great. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. that would have absolutely worked. But this is just like, no, you you did not earn this. You have not built to this. No. This is uncomfortable and no. terrible. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm... I'm <laughs> does this earn any whoops? I mean, uh, at the at the last scene where they're all singing and dancing, I remember like being pretty happy. Just yeah, it's like over. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yay. It did a good job of ending. Yeah. yeah, it feels really long. I think it was only about ninety minutes. Yeah, I mean, I would give like like a whoop. I'll give a whoop just for having a few really decent jokes in yeah. there, but the overall movie just really kind of sucked. Yeah. Zena, what about you? I'm going to give it a whoop and say it's going to be a rough winner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll give it yeah, one whoop. I feel like there was enough stuff like Jack Black had some moments and yeah, I love that goat joke. But mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one of the few movies where it's like like I would have preferred watching a movie that's like mostly boring and has a few good jokes. Yeah. Like this was like mostly negative and had a few good jokes that don't make up for it. So this is like right. Negative overall. <laughs> right. I left the movie feeling guilty for having watched it. <laughs> yeah. You know, just feeling shame. Right. Mm, a lot of shame. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Should we sing oh, a Neil Diamond song? <laughs> We're coming to America. 
All right. So thanks everyone for listening. You can find us online at dustyvcr.com or you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the Dusty VCR. If you want to help our podcast seem more popular, you can go to dustyvcr.com slash review and you can give us a rating on iTunes. It'll pop up iTunes. So it takes like two seconds to just give us five stars if that's what's in your heart on iTunes. Mm. If you want to help us even more, you can write a review. You can just like write some stuff and say... Write love letters. Write love letters to us. And maybe we'll read your review on the next show. And iTunes doesn't allow you to give a whoop rating to podcasts so that you'll just have to write in. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks again to our sponsor, Luthiers in East Hampton, Massachusetts. And goodbye, everyone. Bye.